Good day everyone and thanks for clicking on the video. My name is Chris and today we're going to do an upgrade that I'm way behind on and that is vCenter 6.7 up to vCenter 7. And not only are we going to do the upgrade today, we are going to migrate from vCenter on Windows to a vCenter server appliance or vCSA 7. So without further ado, let's get going. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to No Label Walker. So here we are in the vCenter console. We're going to go about. And first thing we want to do is make sure we're running vCenter 6.7, right, like that, or 6.5 should work as well. The next thing we want to do is rename our lab uh, VM or our vCenter VM. I'm going to rename mine with a append a dash old here so that I can name my new VM lab VC01 if I would like. And then, of course, we need to go download the bits. So wherever you can get vCenter server appliance standard 7 uh, i'm showing it on my.vmware.com here uh, you can get it there if you're, you have an account or get it on your vmug advantage account however you can get those bits now that we have that downloaded we can mount up the iso mount that here with the idea of we want to my to move the migration assistant folder over to our lab uh, to our vcenter server so there I am forever hopeful that I can drag and drop it on my remote desktop. So what we'll do is UNC into the vCenter server, log in with credentials, and then this way we'll be able to copy that migration assistant folder uh, off the mounted ISO over to our vCenter server. So I UNC'd in, now I can open up my ISO folder again Control C on migration assistant folder there, control V to paste it. And now we've got the migration assistant over on our vCenter server where we need it. So we can go now navigate on vCenter um, to that migration assistant and double click it to run it. Now we can go ahead and run the installer, which is found on that same mounted ISO under the vcsa ui installer backslash win32 folder. And actually I got ahead of myself because we need to put our password into our migration assistant here and wait for that to get running and tell us it's ready to migrate. Okay. And now you can see waiting for migration. We'll click migrate and migrating from vCenter server for Windows to vCenter server is a two stage process. The first stage involves deploying a new vCenter server to the target ESXi host or a compute resource in the target vCenter server. The second stage completes the vCenter server setup and copies data from the source vCenter server. So we can hit next. We accept our license agreement. And here we're going to connect to the source server, which is our original vCenter server. So that's lab VC01 for me. Yes to the thumbprint. Here is our deployment target. So what host do we want to deploy our new server on? So which is SXI host. And then here is actually setting up the target vCenter server VM itself. So I will name it lab vcsa01. I know I renamed my old other one to give it the same name, but I changed my mind. We will stick with a tiny deployment size because I have tiny nooks in my home lab. Select the correct data store and keep it on thin provision. And here we specifically are picking DHCP and I will tell you why in just a moment. We can look at our summary and hit finish. And now we are starting our deployment. And you can see in vCenter that new lab VCSA01 is already showing up in the interface as it's deploying. So now we just wait for this to happen. And there we go. You have successfully deployed the vCenter server. To proceed with stage two of the deployment process, vCenter server setup, click continue. Before I do that, I want to talk about this error. If you run into this error saying that the IP address is already in use, IP already exists in the network, this is most likely because you set a static IP address. I tried this multiple times and I heard it was a, a bug fixed in VCSA 6.7 update one, but I still ran into it. I tried deleting it in DNS to see if it was checking there. I tried IP addresses I know I've never used uh, and it still did not work. So what did was DHCP. So set DHCP and you'll be good to go. With that, we can then click continue. 
and now we will hit stage two. And this wizard allows you to migrate a vCenter server for Windows with an embedded platform services controller 6.5 or 6.7 to version 7.0. Migrating from vCenter server to Windows to vCenter server is a two-stage process. The first stage has been completed. The second stage copies data from the source vCenter server for Windows to the deployed vCenter server. Make sure you have backed up all data on the source Windows machine. Now we're going to connect to our source vCenter server again. Hit next. And if you end up here where your pre-migration checks are just spinning and you don't see that migration assistant doing anything, and then you get this error. Um, even though you can see port 9123 is over there running on the migration assistant, this is a DNS issue most likely. So maybe a DNS with your original vCenter server, but seeing as you made it this far, most likely not. Most likely need to set up DNS on your new VCSA appliance. And you can do that by going under the configure management network and setting the DNS configuration. So you're gonna say use the following DNS server and put in your specific DNS server for your network. Now this will allow our VCSA to talk back um, over DNS. And now we should be able to hit next and hopefully get a successful um, migration assistant to be happening here. So you see those pre-migration checks are in progress. With any luck on the left, there we go. We've got some operations actually happening. And now we'll just speed this up. And there we can see migration assistant start, start copying migration assistant logs. We've got some activity happening here. And here we are to continue with stage two. So now we just need to put in our uh, Active Directory domain credentials so we can join the domain. Hit next. I'll validate those Active Directory details for us. Here we can select the data we want to migrate. So is that configuration and inventory, tasks, events, performance. So I'll go ahead and select all for my small environment here. I want to join the experience program. Hit next. And now our ready to complete summary. We can see our FQDN of our old LabVC01 is running 6.7. We have a temporary IP address for it, and it's version 7.0.1 that will be deployed. Um, and then at the bottom, we have a checkbox that says, I have backed up the source vCenter server and all the required data from the database. So we can check that, of course, So I work for a data protection company, I've done that. Now the source vCenter server will be shut down once the network configuration is enabled on the destination vCenter server. So it's good to know. And let's go ahead and start this migration. And there you can see it's kicking off the copy of data. And let's go ahead and speed this up. Excellent. So we've got a couple messages here. Unable to join the target appliance to the Active Directory domain. Not sure why that was, but we can just manually add that. Not a big deal. If using auto deploy, update the DHCP settings. And vSphere 7 disables TLS 1 and TLS 1.1 for security, which is good to know. So data transfer and vCenter server setup has been completed successfully. Click on the link below to get started. Press close to exit. So let's go ahead and click that link. Go to our new vCenter server. And put in our credentials here. I always keep the default credentials because I always forget my username and need to look it up. Now, if you end up with a you know, web services error here or it takes quite a while to log in, as you can see, mine's taking some time here, don't worry. The web services are probably just starting. If you just give it some time and uh, try logging in again after a few minutes, it will most likely just work. You can see mine is taking some time here. There we go. Time to get in. And here is our new vCenter server appliance up and running. I uh, can see right there in the middle it says version 7.0.1 and there's updates available. And then up at the top this is kind of nice big orange bar here it says manage your licenses because my version 6 licenses don't work for version 7. Let's go ahead and click in there. That'd be a nice easy way just to add licenses here. 
I don't see an add license button, but I eventually just went back to hosts and clusters, right clicked on my vCenter and there it is, assign license. So now we can just click new license. Here we can go ahead and type in our license key. And then we can also give it a unique name. It's very good to give it a unique name so that you know which license you're using here. So for example, I have multiple versions, six licenses there. I can give this a unique name, something like VCSA7, so that I know that it is for my new version 7 uh, vCenter servers. Now we can click on details as I got a mark here. So vSphere storage appliance feature is not available to the licensed assets. So maybe this is different from, from the, the trial license you get to the standard one I applied here. We can go ahead and hit OK. And now our license is assigned. Now if you still are seeing these screens, you have no privileges to view or you're having issues viewing those licenses, Again, try logging out and logging back in or let, giving it a few more minutes. Um, I eventually was able to come back in here under licenses and see that my VCSA 7 license was applied just fine. You can see it has a capacity of two and I'm using one. Shows up under products as well. And then under assets, most importantly here, you can see my VC01 is using that one instance the VCSA 7 license and it expires in a year. So with that, we should be all good to go. I hope you found this video helpful and catch you next time. Thanks.